So I have problematic takes, and here's a problematic take. Uh, even though it's not, it's just an observation. And I think you'll notice this is true. And if you can find examples of it, I want you to give them to me down in the comments. But I saw Dune the other day, and I made a video about it, but I felt like I was negative, and I don't like to be negative about art anymore. And I also think Dune's a beautifully made movie, but I did notice something in it. It's really interesting which is that in the books of Dune, the Fremen, these people who live on the big sand planet, are essentially Middle Eastern. They use the word jihad. They kind of look and seem like people from the area colloquially known as the Middle East. You know, Iran, Afghanistan, Israel, Palestine. That's that, that whole Egypt, that whole confederation of areas, Saudi Arabia, is represented kind of by the Fremen. And that's because Dune takes a lot from Lawrence of Arabia. So in the new movie, Dune, we meet the Fremen and they're black and Filipino and Mexican and every single ethnic minority that has been oppressed in our world by imperialism and capitalism. What? Excuse me, what? All the brown people are the poor people? And then I thought, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's such a long history of race blind casting in Hollywood. I mean, look at the career of Rita Moreno, where people who have a darker pigmentation can be anything. And this is never more noticeable when, than when the leader of the Fremen shows up. And the f leader of the Fremen on the p Dune planet, Arrakis, is Javier Bardem, a white guy. Yes, Javier Bardem has an accent. Yes, he's like a little sephardic because he's from Spain. So he has a bit of a European, darker complexion. You know, they have him in blackface in this movie. And I, it's not even outrageous to say that. He's like so caked with dirt and dust and doing this very thick accent. He's clearly sort of playing at Stilgar, he's the character, a guy who is Middle Eastern, but we're, well, we don't want to, you know, and it's so funny because you'll notice this in science fiction movies and fantasy movies. I've never noticed this before, but when I noticed it, it like opened a floodgate of, of so many other properties. When we meet the poor people of the alien world, they're not one race generally. If they're played by humans without makeup, they're almost always a constellation of the brown people of earth and it, it's always like this is where you're putting all the minority characters as the o o oppressed minority giant box like when you kind of there's this sort of implication that a lot of the stormtroopers are black in the new in the new star wars movies and it was like what are you saying what are you trying to say and i can answer that they're trying not to be racist because they, they're they trying to prevent it from being the noble savage trope. And it isn't. Dune is ultimately a subversion of the white savior trope because he rejects his messiahhood. It also is the white savior trope. They can, it can be a subversion and not be a subversion at the same time. I come to your planet and do what you do better than you. I'm the king of your culture. That is the white savior trope. I'm not upset about it. Outside saviors, that's the fucking history of human storytelling. That's not what I'm ranting about here. I'm not even upset about anything. But how many times have you been to an alien world where, because the executives and the producers and the marketing and everyone involved, they're like, well, we don't want to go to the alien world and have the poor people be a bunch of black guys because that would be racist. And so in their head, they're like, mm, what's less racist? All the races that aren't white, that's less racist. And it's funny because it's it's a no-win situation. And this type of thinking, this fear to offend anyone, it, 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 to, to the degree that it makes, it makes a noticeably racist feeling, which is that, oh, all the people of the world are the, the underclass and the white people rule them, even into movies. That's not the intentional feeling. But what's funny is that this type of thinking is the same exact shit that led to Rey in Star Wars being the way she is. Where it's like, the first female Jedi, and she doesn't get to make jokes or get laid or, <laughs> or, or have like a, a, a crazy a arc. She didn't even get an arc. 
Because having her make any big mistakes, that might be offensive. What are you implying? A woman can't be as big, a, good of a Jedi as a man? And it's fake. Strong female characters are fake. Well-written female characters have existed in fiction and in movies especially throughout the entire 20th century. Women have been able to open movies without being strong female characters. We had a whole period, 20 year period, where women in their 40s like Bette Midler and Susan Sarandon, all these actresses were opening huge movies from 1982 to fucking 1997. So like this idea, there are so many little political ideas that seep into movies that then become around marketing like diversity and representation it's strong, you know, it's, it's a marketing thing. You can execute it well in a movie, but ultimately there's a great female character in The Godfather Part Two, and I don't think that movie passes the Bechdel test, but then you look at something like River Wild with Meryl Streep, now that's a fucking strong female character, and by strong, I mean well-written. Nine to five, soap dish, even fucking Tootsie. Tootsie, a movie that should be the most problematic movie ever, is honest, uncompromising, and is brilliantly written women. So why does Ray exist? But then we get into like all my weird shit where I'm like, our marketing responses to what we believe people will react to. It's like in, when you watch a YouTube hot take video where every five seconds someone's apologizing and going, now by that I don't mean, like one of those Sarah Z videos. I love Sarah Z. I love all these YouTube commentator, Big Joel, all these people, but they apologize so fucking much in between every sentence. And it gets to the point where you wonder how deeply they actually hold the beliefs if they can really not defend them under any level of the wild, insane, often incoherent reasoning of the internet. Because fuck the internet, right? Like, someone's always gonna be mad. If it was a bunch of Iranian guys on Arrakis, some Iranian people would be like, how come we're the noble savage that you're going to come in and save? Oh, really? The outside white people are going to come to the sand land and fix it? Like, how have we been doing with that, Afghanistan? So, like, it's, it's, it's just so dumb because there would be a Twitter thing where it's like, why are... Why are, let's say they were all Iranian guys. They'd be like, why are the Iranians the chosen to be the people of Arrakis? And it wouldn't be a big controversy, but the risk of any kind of controversy like that is why the people of Arrakis are a rainbow. And it's the same fucking reason that, I mean, like, it's the same weird thinking where Black Panther wasn't allowed to like fuck anyone really. And he like wasn't allowed to make jokes or be cool. And then at the end of the movie, a fucking white guy saved the world. Isn't that interesting? List examples of alien or fantasy worlds in which the oppressed people are played by a big crowd of minorities below. Have a great Wednesday.